Hello everyone, this is Rob Goodhue. We're in the Harbor Ridge kitchen and we're going to have some fun today. We're going to cook up some healthy, happy food. All right, so what I mean by healthy and happy is uh, I like to mix uh, healthy ingredients with some not so healthy ingredients because if it's too healthy, it usually doesn't taste very good, you know? So um, a lot of people like to have been hearing a lot about kale, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, kale salad a kale and spinach salad with some caramelized apples, uh, a broiled goat cheese medallion, and a little bacon sherry vinaigrette. Uh, the ingredients I have here, um, spinach, kale, goat cheese, apple, shallots, panko breadcrumbs, applewood smoked bacon. And then for our vinaigrette, we have here a little bit of honey, whole grain mustard, Dijon mustard. We have some apple cider vinegar, and some olive oil. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our goat cheese for the, uh, for the broiled goat cheese medallion. Um, what I like to do is I like to have a knife in hot water, okay? Because that's gonna allow me to cut through the goat cheese without breaking it apart. I'm gonna cut about three quarter inch medallions here I'm actually uh, going to just dip them in a little bit of panko breadcrumbs. Kind of press those breadcrumbs into the goat cheese. And when these broil up, this is going to add a nice little crunchiness, crunchiness to our salad and a little gooiness with the goat cheese. We're going to set those aside. And we're going to put them in the refrigerator just for a few minutes so that they firm up. So when we broil them, they don't melt all over the place. I like to use parchment paper in the kitchen because um, when I'm peeling things, I can easily get rid of the scraps and it doesn't create a mess. So I'm going to peel my apple. Just like so, okay. Set my parchment paper aside. I may use that a little later on if I'm peeling potatoes or something like that. Now I'm going to cut my apple into eighths. I'm gonna cut those ends off. I like to take the, the core out like this instead of using an apple core. It's a little quicker. And then I'm going to cut those into one more time. So we have eight pieces. I like to have nice big chunks of apple in my salad and kind of go with the, uh, the slight bitterness of the kale. We'll set that aside. We have our apples. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to cut the uh, kale into nice strips because kale in big chunks is very hard to eat and this helps uh, break it down a little bit when we saute it. A lot of people don't know that cooked kale is actually um, slightly healthier for you than raw kale because it activates a lot of the nutrients that are in the, uh, the vegetable. I'm going to set that aside there. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to mince some shallots. This is going to be for our vinaigrette. Uh, these are going to add like a little bit of sharpness and uh, texture to our, our dressing. I love shallots. They have a nice little sweet, they're a little bit sweeter than an onion. And um, we use them a lot in our pan sauces as well. I have a nice fine little mince going on there. All 
right. Now we're ready to do a little bit of cooking for our salad. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make our nice caramelized apples for our salad and our delicious uh, warm bacon dressing, okay? So we're going to start off with a little bit of olive oil, okay? Get that on nice high heat. And uh, we're going to add in our applewood smoked bacon. We're going to let that render in that olive oil. Then we're going to add our apples right at the beginning. Okay? So we want to get, we want those apples to get uh, mixed in with that bacon fat. And I'm actually going to sprinkle just a touch of sugar on those apples. Just a little bit of innocent white sugar. So we can get some extra caramelization on those. Oh yeah, those are starting to look nice. And that fat from the bacon is uh, going to give us the fat we need for that nice dressing. See, we want to make this dish happy and healthy. And when in doubt, just add bacon. All right, so we have nice caramelization on our uh, apples, but we don't want to cook them until they're mushy, okay? So we just want good color and we want that nice... Uh, 50% of that, that bacon fat to have come out of the bacon. Now we're going to get our other pan, a little bit of olive oil, nice high heat, and we're going to put our, uh, our kale in there, and we're just going to lightly wilt it. We're not, gonna, we're not making like uh, slow-cooked collard greens here. We're just going to wilt those greens down so that they're a little bit more tender in the salad. We're also going to add in a little bit of salt. Give, the, give that kale a little bit of flavor. While that's cooking, we're going to come back to our apples. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add our shallots. Okay, we're going to let our shallots kind of render into that bacon fat. We're just going to let them get a little bit tender but not too much because we want them to still have a little bit of bite. Here we're going to add our honey. Just a little bit. We don't want too much. We don't want it to be too sweet because we still have the sweetness of those apples. Okay. There, that's nice. The green, the nice color of that kale is coming out. We're going to let that, uh, once that honey kind of starts to caramelize a little bit, uh, we're going to add a little splash of white wine, okay? Make sure to leave some for yourself as well. Just a little splash. That's going to get that, those caramelized bits off the bottom of the pan and help make that vinaigrette. Once your kale has been wilted. Like I said, we don't want to cook it all the way down, okay? So we're going to set that aside in our mixing bowl, okay? Put our kale away there. Apples back on. We add our honey, our white wine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. We're going to add about four, four teaspoons, let's say five teaspoons. Let that just slightly simmer. We don't want that to reduce too much because we want the, the flavor of that apple cider vinegar to be uh, very pronounced. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a little bit of Dijon mustard, just a touch, and a little bit of whole grain mustard. I like the texture of the whole grain mustard. Uh, it gives a little bit of um, a little bit of a, a pop to the vinaigrette. So we're going to mix that up, just warm it up, and then we're going to add our olive oil. Okay. About a quarter cup of olive oil. That Dijon mustard is going to help make a, an emulsified dressing. And then we're going to keep that warm right there and we're going to finish the rest of the salad. Okay. Alright, so once we've made our dressing and we wilted our kale, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of broil this goat cheese, get a little bit of a nice color. Um, what I like to do is I like to use a little bit of pan spray. Uh, you can do this in a saute pan. Maybe a Teflon pan would be nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in the broiler real quick and get some nice color on it. Give it about 30 seconds until it's nice and golden brown and the, the inside of that goat cheese is nice and gooey. Now what we have, we have our wilted kale, okay? We have our, our raw spinach. We have our nice warm gooey uh, goat cheese uh, medallions. And we're just going to add in a little bit of spinach in with the um, kale. And I'm going to take my nice delicious dressing I have in my pan. And I'm going to drizzle that over my greens. Add a little pinch, little pinch of salt. Then put our greens. So we have a nice about 50-50 mixture of spinach and kale. And then I'm gonna put my apples. Look at those beautiful apples. We're going to spoon those around. Dressing on top. Our nice warm goat cheese medallion right there. Kale and spinach salad with uh, caramelized apples, warm bacon vinaigrette, and gooey goat cheese medallion. Voila. All right, so for our second dish here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a nice local fish. Um, really one of my favorites, it's uh, pompano. And a lot of times at the club, uh, what we do is we take the skin off, but the skin is actually really tasty when it's done right. And I'm going to show you how to get that nice crispy skin on it. And what we're going to do is um, instead of actually doing a, a, a classic starch with it, we're going to do a, uh, a cauliflower couscous. And we're going to actually use cauliflower as the base for the couscous uh, for the dish. Uh, and then we're going to do a nice little, uh, little citrus uh, tomato pan sauce with fresh herbs to finish it off. All right, so what we have here is we have the uh, fresh pompano skin on. I've got a little bit of flour. Uh, we're just going to lightly dust that uh, later on. Um, I have the cauliflower. I have some nice uh, winter citrus here, some uh, little sumo oranges. I've got shallot. For my pan sauce, I've got untoasted almonds, a little bit of white raisins, golden raisins. I have um, my nice ripe grape tomatoes that are in season right now, and a curry powder, a little bit of white wine, and I've actually got the tops to two uh, uh, plastic soup containers, and I'll show you later on what we're going to use those for. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to break out our trusty uh, parchment paper once again, okay? Because we're going to make a little bit of a mess and we don't want the cauliflower uh, getting everywhere. We're going to take a cheese grater, right? And then uh, we're just going to break off this cauliflower into manageable chunks. And we're going to grate it just like, just like you would cheese. And the, you're going to see, like, it, it actually takes the shape of couscous, which is really a lot of fun because 
cauliflower is super healthy, um, but eating it in big florets isn't always the most appetizing thing. Uh, this is going to be a substitute for our starch. So we have our cauliflower couscous, and we're going to, what I do, and you can do this when you grate cheese as well. If you like to do a nice grated Parmesan at home, use your parchment paper to catch all those scraps and you'll make a less of a mess. All right, so we have that. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to do our citrus segments. And I just take a knife and I peel the outer part of the orange. And I like doing segments because they look really great on top of the fish. And this time of year, the citrus is so good. It's so sweet. It's going to add a lot of sweetness and a little bit of acidity to our, uh, our fish dish. Really complement that nice local pompano. All right, we're going to save the inside because we're going to squeeze that later on for sauce. That's going to be part of the sauce that we make in the pan. All right. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to mince some shallots again for our pan sauce. This takes lots of practice and a sharp knife, so be careful. All right, so I'm going to show you what these, uh, these little plastic tops are for. Um, when my kids were toddlers and my, uh, my wife was worried about um, them eating whole grapes, I showed her this trick to uh, help her have the grapes, and it works well for tomatoes as well. I just take these two things. You can also use a small plate, and we're going to take the knife, and we're going to cut right through the middle, okay? And now you have nice halved cherry tomatoes, or you could use it on grapes, like I said. And that's going to be part of our pan sauce as well. Okay? So, after that, what we're going to do is we're going to pick some of these nice basil leaves. And we're going to do another chiffonade, as the French call it, which is basically cutting uh, strips of leafy vegetables, or cutting leafy vegetables into strips, if you will. And we're just going to finally Cut that into almost confetti. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. Nice fresh basil from the garden. One of the most overlooked herbs in the herb family is parsley. And parsley, fresh cut parsley is one of my favorites. It, uh, it needs to be cut and cooked with at the last minute. And Unlike a lot of kitchens, uh, I don't like to over chop it. I like to just rough chop it a couple times because if you chop it too much, what happens is it starts, it, it smells and tastes like lawn clippings, which is not something we're trying to go for uh, when we cook. All right, that's, that just smell, it should really smell, have that nice, vibrant, fresh parsley smell. And that's going to really make our pan sauce tastes lively. All right, so now what we're going to do uh, for our fish dish, we're going to make our uh, couscous cauliflower. We're going to start off once again with uh, a little bit of olive oil. Okay, and we're going to get that, let that get nice and hot. Then um, we're actually going to add our almonds in uh, to start because we want to get that nice toasted almond flavor. Right now they, they, they're going to be kind of bland if we don't uh, get a little bit of color on them. And we're going to season as we go, just a little bit of salt. Alright, so we got nice, uh, nice golden brown color on our almonds. 
Those are, those are smelling nice. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add our cauliflower in, okay? And that, we're going to toss that all together. Season that cauliflower with a little bit of salt. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil so it doesn't dry out and burn. And you don't want to overcook it because uh, then it's kind of mushy and it just tastes like cauliflower mashed potatoes. I'm going to add a little bit of curry powder in there, give it a little zing. And I like some golden raisins because the cauliflower has a slight natural bitterness and the, uh, the sweetness of the golden raisins really, really makes a nice flavor for the dish. Oh yeah, that's smelling really good. All right, so uh, now we're gonna cook our pompano. We have our nice fresh fish right here. And what we're gonna do first, we always season. I'm gonna season both sides of my pompano. And uh, don't be shy. No one likes bland fish. I'm going to, um, the skin side, I'm gonna lightly dust with just a little bit of flour. Just a little bit, not too much. Okay, and what that's going to do is it's going to guarantee that I get a uh, get that fish to not stick to my pan. I've got a nice uh, all clad pan here. Before I start cooking any fish, I add a little bit of oil to the pan. I take a towel. I always have like a little grease towel. And I, I season my pan. That way, the oil gets into the pores of the steel. Okay, so now I'm going to add fresh oil into the pan. And as uh, one famous chef says, lay away, lay your proteins away from you so that the oil does not splash on you, okay? So we're gonna lay away, skin side down, okay? And I like to uh, take a spatula and lightly press on the fish because that skin tightens up and uh, the fish bends a little bit in the beginning of the cooking, but it will relax after about 30 seconds. All right, so we, uh, we cooked our, our pompano skin side down for about two minutes, and it's a thin fish, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it, and you can see I have a nice golden brown and, and that skin has gotten nice and crunchy, okay? So I'm gonna flip it, and when I flip it, it's probably about 50% cooked when I flip it. And so now I'm gonna cook it the rest of the way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. And this is a technique called Aerozane. And this is gonna just make that fish really, really taste excellent. We're gonna let that thyme, that's fresh thyme. We're gonna let that uh, kind of infuse with the butter and get that pop and sizzle going. And now I'm gonna spoon the butter right on the fish. Now this is gonna give that pompano some really good nutty flavor from the brown butter. But this butter is not gonna make its way into the dish. All right, our pompano is cooked. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that rest. We don't wanna eat it right away. We wanna let it carry over cook. All right, so now I got rid of that old butter. I have a little bit of olive oil in the pan. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, the same pan I cooked the fish in, I'm gonna add my minced shallots and we're gonna make the pan sauce for our fish. So I don't wanna brown those uh, shallots. I just wanna cook them until they're translucent. And then I'm gonna add my tomatoes and my orange segments.
Okay? And I'm just going to let those tomatoes cook just, just for like 20 seconds. Let them, let them soften up a little bit so that they're not raw. I'm going to season my sauce with a little bit of salt. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to add a splash of my Tunnel of Elm Chardonnay. That's going to get all that flavor off the bottom of the pan. I'm going to let that reduce. And then remember my orange that I had. I'm going to squeeze that right into my pan. Oh, that smells nice. That smells so good. Mm. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit more butter. Don't hold it against me. I am French trained, so. And we're just going to kind of stir that butter in, and all that citrus is going to break up and mix with the butter and emulsify so we have a nice creamy sauce. I'm going to add in my fresh parsley and my fresh basil. All right, there we have our, uh, our tomato citrus pan sauce that's going to go really well with our pompano. So now we have our, uh, our pompano dish, our uh, delicious smelling cauliflower couscous. And we're just going to do a little bed of that. And then we have our nice crispy skinned local pompano. And that nice beautiful citrus tomato pan sauce. There we go. Just a little bit on top because we don't want the skin to get soggy. And then we're just going to ladle that all around. And then the nice finishing touch. I found a little bit of uh, nice herb oil for a little green. There you have it. Crispy skinned local pompano with cauliflower couscous and a citrus tomato vierge pan sauce. Okay, so the, the flakiness of the skin is delicious on the fish. It's a very white fish, very juicy, lemony. I am loving the salty and crispiness of the bacon, the sweetness of the apples, and the unbelievable gooiness of the cheese. Mm -hmm.